That's why my bipartisan infrastructure law is building a network of 500,000 electric vehicle charging stations all across America. Well, what we're doing with these charging stations is the same thing my grandpa did. I'm not joking. Think about it. You're building communities, little tiny communities. Labor has been always opposed to environmental changes because they think it costs them jobs. It's their future. They're going to build 550,000 electric charging stations all across America. The Federal Highway Administration says only seven or eight charging stations have been produced with a seven and a half billion investment that taxpayers made back in 2021. Today, we start with Secretary of Transportation, Pete Buttigieg. He went on Face the Nation to defend the disaster that is the Biden administration. And there are two parts of this interview that really stand out, where he's really trying to push a propaganda narrative, including one instance where Margaret Brennan even laughs at his response. The first part I'm going to show you is him being asked about turbulence in airplanes. And she's asking him about whether Americans should be concerned about turbulence going forward, which of course he then tries to blame on climate change. What you were thinking and planning for, do you need to change regulation because of more severe turbulence as well? The reality is the effects of climate change are already upon us in terms of our transportation. We've seen that in the form of everything from uh, heat waves that shouldn't statistically even be possible, threatening to melt the cables of transit systems in the Pacific Northwest, to, as you mentioned, hurricane seasons becoming more and more extreme and indications that turbulence is up by about 15%. Uh, that means assessing anything and everything that we can do about it. Here in the U.S.? Uh, well, in the atmosphere generally, okay. uh, but uh, certainly something that will affect American travelers, uh, whether uh, here or abroad. Now, there are protocols and patterns for things like how pilots who encounter turbulence can notify those who might be uh, coming in the path, but I do think we need to continually reevaluate that in the face of the reality that these things are more frequent and more severe than before. We also, once again, need to be paying attention to the physical condition of our built infrastructure, mm -hmm. whether it's airports, ports, roads. It makes no sense to build a road to the exact specification we required 100 years ago, have it be washed out, require it be put back just the way it was, and have it be washed out again. Then he was asked about charging stations for electric vehicles. Joe Biden has been saying for years that they were going to build a half a million charging stations for electric vehicles. But despite the fact that over $7 billion have been allocated for this political cause, only seven actual charging stations have been built. And when Buttigieg is asked about this, he says, no worries, we got this, just trust the plan. What's interesting about this clip to me is that Margaret Brennan will clearly be voting for Biden in November, but even she laughs when Buttigieg is spewing his propaganda narrative. Just give it a few years and everyone in this administration will be claiming that they never said they would be building a half a million EV charging stations, and they'll call you a liar for saying it. Um, I want to ask you about something that we hear quite a lot about on the campaign trail, and that is electric cars, <laughs> electric vehicles. Donald Trump repeatedly talks about President Biden's decision to force the industry towards making 56 percent of car batteries electric by 2032, 13 percent hybrid. Listen to what he said in New Jersey recently. Do you notice he's trying to save the electrical vehicle, but not the gas powered, which is the vehicle that everybody wants? They're going crazy with the electric car costing us a fortune. We're spending hundreds of billions of dollars subsidizing a car that nobody wants and nobody's ever going to buy. He's not wrong oh, he's on wrong. the purchasing. <laughs> he's not. Of the, of the 4 million vehicles purchased, you know, what, 269,000 electric vehicles were sold in the U.S. market. It's up like and 2%. every single year, more Americans buy EVs but than the year. Well, this we is really important. More quickly? Every single year, more Americans buy EVs than the year prior. There are two things uh, that I think are needed for that to happen even more quickly. Uh, one is the price, which is why the Inflation Reduction Act acted to cut the price of an electric vehicle. The second is making sure we have the charging network we need across America. Even though most EV char owners will do most of their charging at home, if you live in an apartment building or you're driving long distances, you need uh, other options in those chargers. So that's exactly what we're working on. But I want to talk about the bigger point here. And I take this very personally because I grew up in the industrial Midwest, literally in the shadow of broken down factories from car companies that did not survive into right. the turn of the century because they and didn't keep up with the times. And many of those auto workers are concerned that electric vehicles require fewer humans to manufacture. The most important thing is that the EV revolution will happen with or without us, and we've got to make sure that it's American-led. The Federal Highway Administration says only seven or eight charging stations have been produced with a seven and a half billion investment 
that taxpayers made back in 2021. Why isn't that happening more quickly? So the president's goal is to have half a million chargers up by the end of this decade. Now, in order to do a charger, it's more than just plunking a, mm -hmm. uh, a small device into the ground. There's utility work, and this is also uh, really a new category of federal investment. But we've been working with each of the 50 states. Every one of them is getting formula dollars to do this work, Seven engaging eight, them though? and the first handful, again, by 2030, 500,000 <laughs> chargers. And the very first handful of chargers are now already being physically built. But again, that's the absolute very, very beginning stages of the construction right. to come. But, but that gets to the point about not being able to make long distance travel possible quickly if you don't have the infrastructure there right. to support so, um, it. So you recognize it. Yeah, it most of the charging infrastructure right now is being provided by the private sector. The reason that we're investing federal dollars is to fill in some of the gaps in areas where it is not yet profitable for the private sector. To As uh, I think it was President Reagan said, we're from the government. We're here to help. 